Thanks for staying here. The Ministry of Agriculture is asking the public to be on high alert for cases of bird flu after the World Organization for Animal Health confirmed the presence of the disease in the country. Last month, the Noguchi Memorial Institute disclosed samples taken from poultry farms as Achimota and Tema tested positive for the disease. The samples were sent to Italy for corroboration. Despite the double confirmation, the ministry says the outbreak is under control. We can now speak with Dr. Hannah Bissell from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here, Doc. You're welcome. Now, so we have the confirmation of the disease. How different is this from previous cases? And it's a previous cases like? Previous cases we had from the Noguchi, the Noguchi cases that were brought in. Well, I'm not too sure about any case that has been brought in from Noguchi. Noguchi doesn't have a poultry farm, so there wouldn't be a case from Noguchi. No, so, some, some samples were tested in Noguchi. Well, I just want to set the straight because I heard your introductory. Um, the veterinary services of Ghana took samples from farms, I mean samples in terms of birds from farms, and they did via testing an isolated H5. The extracts were taken to Noguchi, and they were not six, I think there were about five of them. Some of them were extracts from um, um, affected birds, and some were just comparative. Um, and samples. And so that was what was sent from veterinary to Noguchi as customers. We sent it there as customers. Not that because Noguchi went to farm and took samples. I think that we need to set that straight. Noguchi also isolated H5. And so we needed to send it for confirmation, not because Noguchi um, isolated H5N1. Noguchi did not. The veterinarians did not. And so we had to take it to Padova to the referral laboratory. And so that is what, that I see. Is what happened. I see. So samples were sent, extra were sent from our laboratory in Laboni to Nobuchi for them to also see if they could get H5N1 for us. Very well. Then we need to move on from this. So now, now we have got into. Now we have the confirmation. What are the efforts being put in place to uh, control it? Well, um, when we had even the H5, um, the VSB moved in and went as though it was H5N1. And so what we did was to, you know, okay. uh, all the birds. Hello? Uh, we can hear you. Yeah, since we're getting somebody talking to some other person, it's just like interrupting me. Oh, we apologize for that, but we can hear you clearly. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Right, please go ahead. You were telling us about efforts being put in place. I think we lost uh, the minister there. We'll put in efforts to raise her over the telephone. We'll talk about those control measures. We'll then we'll also speak uh, to her about uh, the mode of transmission, how we can also prevent bird to human transmission, and how safe it is for you and I to consume chicken going forward, in spite of the assurances her ministry has given uh, since the confirmation. Now, let me give it another shot, uh, find out if the minister is over the telephone. Hello, Dr. Bisu. Well, I think we do not have her uh, yet. But we can talk about other stories now. A team of security personnel and officials of the Sokore Mampo Municipal Assembly have embarked on a demolition exercise at an area called Abuabu Pelele in the, municipal, in, the, in the municipality. We can get in touch with Ohiming Tewia, who is a man on the beat. But before then, now, uh, the MC for the air, Al Haji Nuruddin Hamidan, says the exercise has become necessary due to the health hazards and security threats of inhabitants security threats that inhabitants pose to the assembly 
Well, I uh, would see that clip in a bit, but I understand that uh, Dr. Hannah Bissou is back over the telephone. Uh, thank you very much for your patience, Dr. Bissou. But you were telling us about those efforts. Well, um, so um, what we've done is to eliminate all the beds. Um, when we say eliminate, we've, um, we don't want to use the word kill. We've got those that we've sanitized the bed and it can dispose of appropriately as the law requires. We've done um, all the disinfection. Anything that has to be burned has been burned. And then the people, the workers on the farm, they are also going through screening. And so we've also put these four farms under quarantine and they've given the stance of command, which means that nothing can go in and nothing can come out. And we've raised the surveillance of that area to about 100 percent. Even though our surveillance now, especially at our border town, you know, uh, you know, has been raised up to 100 percent. So this is how we are going to contain, you know, uh, the disease and also eliminate the existence of the virus in the affected farm. Um, we've also raised the awareness, and uh, you know, in the various districts. I mean, regions, our veterinary officers, you know, are ready. Uh, veterinary paraprofessionals are there to help and support. So we've asked for that should any farmer see any effect. It doesn't have to be on a poultry farm. You could even have turkey, duck, fowl, parrot, um, any form of bird that you may have, at, even at home. If you realize that, you know, they are not active, you know, they've gone and found themselves in a corner world, you know, that normally they would have been active. We advise that you quickly, you know, um, alert um, a technical person for them, in this case, the veterinarians, for them to see what the problem may be. Mm. We're also advising and encouraging every farmer, especially our poultry farmers, to activate their biosecurity system. What is happening is that a lot of our farms have ignored the biosecurity systems that is supposed to be on our farm. Um, at the entrance of our farms, you have to have something like a mini pool, if you want to put it, and then we have a disinfectant in it. The length of it, the longitude, should be such that any vehicle that will go through to your farm, the tire should be rolled two times before it enters your farm. You need to have a smaller one for people who are coming on foot so that they step in, wet, you know, um, um, their shoes before they come in into your farm. We are even advising that at your gate, you can have some um, uh, rubber boots, some mm. cementing boots. So, so how, are, how, are we, how are we making it easier for bird keepers to report suspected cases? Well, um, we, what we are working on is to get a hotline, but we're appealing to radio stations especially that, you know, the lines that you have that um, people will call in normally if you see something, you know, if there's any unusual happening anywhere, they'll call in to report. We are pleading that, you know, the radio stations, you know, the TV stations, you support government in this aspect that should anybody who lives closer to a poultry farm or you work on a poultry farm and you realize that you know the birds are dying and maybe the farm owner doesn't even want to report you know you just call we don't need the name of the caller but we do need just the name and location of the farm so that we quickly will move in and then we go and check if it's a bird flu issue or if any other outbreak either than bird flu for, so for, for those how we are doing. Yeah, go ahead. For those who may be keeping the birds for uh, profits, uh, is there any incentive associated with this for them? Well, we have the FAO you know, in the country as we speak. They've been here um, for about three, four days now. They are going to the floor. Um, bird flu outbreak, I mean, it's been all over. It's not only in Ghana or in Africa. We had it in Europe. It's come to... West Africa has gone to all the countries surrounding Ghana. And they've gone around, they've supported these countries, you know, technically and other things that, you know, support that they have to support 
to encourage our farmers to come out you know, and report cases. So tomorrow they should be coming to debrief the ministry. So uh, during the debriefing, we should discuss some of these issues and we'll come to you know, an agreement as to what to do. But I just want to use this opportunity to say this, that any farmer who has sick beds and you decide that you will not report, you're going to lose all the beds anyway. That is number one. Number two, you now will then um, increase your exposure and the risk of, you know, um, getting the disease from the bed. And so we will advise that in our own interest, we should report any of such cases. And we should not try to slaughter these birds and sell them. When you slaughter the bread and you sell the bread, if I should purchase the bread, I'll cook it or fry it, it wouldn't do me any harm. But you, the farmer, who has a, a prolonged exposure, because we need a prolonged exposure mm. with the sick bed or with the area that you have the virus for you to get that virus from the bed. Which so brings me to my next question. How, uh, w what are we doing with those farms where the samples were taken from? The, 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 the workers in those farms. The, the, the what? The workers in those farms. I said, I think that um, I said earlier on that the, the Minister of Health is bringing them. Hello, Dr. Abisu. Hello, Dr. Abisu. I yes, think. Then. Uh, the, the line was a bit patchy there, so I'm not sure we heard what you said. But I said that the um, public health unit of the Ministry of Health, they are screening the workers. And so far, we've not, you know, heard any um, bad news, if you want to put it. Very well. Very well. Now, can the Ghanaian go ahead to consume chicken uh, for, 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 for those who may have fear of contracting the disease, you know, moving from birds to human? Yes, please, it's safe to continue consuming eggs. I have had my two eggs this morning, and um, in the afternoon I'll have some more eggs, but uh, it's, it's, it's to consume the bird. Let's think about even the worst case scenario that I purchased a bird, you know, which was sick, and it was slaughtered, dressed for me. That that period of exposure of me getting the bread, you know, cooking the bread and cooking it well and eating it, I stand at zero risk or no risk at all of, you know, getting the disease. Mm, very the well. only way I'll get it is that if I should eat the bread raw. So those who are at risk are those working on the farm. You know, that is what we have to start looking at, but it's safe to eat chicken. Mm. We'll be here. Thank you very much, Dr. Biso. You're Dr. Welcome. Hannah Biso is Minister for... Uh, agriculture, food and agriculture.